Yo, what's good, YouTube? Scoot here, back with the NNDL. We've got season eight, week number 13, the final week of the season. We're sitting at seven and five right now. So we've got this last game left. We'll determine whether we finish seven and six or eight and five. The playoffs are already clinched, so it's not too, too important of a match outside of seeding. But of course, we always wanna win as many games as possible. So that being said, um, we're facing off against Jacob. So last week we faced off against Kirby, the number two team. This week we're rounding out our season with the number three team, the Kraft Mac and Cheese, coached by Jacob. So he's got a pretty powerful squad. He's got the Latios, Nettle King, Mega Gyarados, Tapu Bulu, Heat Ran, and the Zeraora. Those are the five that I think he'll bring, but I do believe that he's got potential to bring uh, Crogonal over the Zeraora or the Hitmon Lee over the Zeraora. Um, I don't think he's going to bring the Drifblum. I have uh, Mandibuzz. I have Unaware Clefable. Um, I don't really see it coming, um, but it could, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, that's his squad. He's got uh, Fantastic Speed and Zara Aura, so kind of forced to run Timid uh, Alakazam, but at the same time, knowing that he can run Adamant to just outpace my Tauros and everything slower than my Tauros, including my Inferno, he could just run Adamant because he can't outpace my Alakazam anyway. So an Adamant variant could come if he, if he chooses to bring it. Um, I expect something like Knock Off uh, for the incoming Nidal Queen and Plasma Fist obviously for pretty much Clefable, Suicune, and the Mana Buzz. Perhaps Fire Punch for the Serena. It, it would also hit the, the Nidal Queen for neutral damage. Um, the the Latios, I thought he could bring like a Choice Specs variant with maybe uh, with Trick possibly to kind of catch my Manda Buzz. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if he does decide to bring the Hitmonlee, he can do a few different things with it. He could bring a Fake Out variant. He could bring a uh, a Scarfed variant with like Knock Off and Close Combat. He could bring. Um, he could bring some kind of uh, like a lychee berry set with Endure. And the Nidal King pretty much going to be offensive. Uh, there's no way he's not bringing Nidal King. It just does so well against Clefable, my own Nidal Queen, Serena, um, Mandibuzz, and Suicune with Thunderbolt. Man, the thing is just powerful. Uh, I do think he'll bring a physically offensive set with Thunder Punch, um, Poison Jab, and perhaps earthquake. He, he may he may not bring earthquake, uh, but I do think he will for for my own middle queen. I think it would want to be able to outpace and do huge damage to that. So I do think he's going to bring an offensive middle king. Um, he could have uh, what, what did I, I said earthquake right? Yeah, he could have taunt as well to uh, prevent Amanda Buzz from setting up, and he could also be a stealth rocker and mega Gyarados. Um, could be like a taunt dragon dance variant it could just be straight up dragon dance it could be taunt thunder wave it could be a waterfall crunch which is pretty much what i expect it to be he could also bring um tapu bulu which would give him the grassy terrain and grassy terrain boosted power whips from mega gyarados will actually two hit ko a suicune um if he's like you know offensively invested and yeah, speaking of bulu i think it'll come Mostly because um, I have Suicune, so and I have Clefable as well. So this thing can kind of break those two Pokemon uh, with like Life Orb or Banded Woodhammer, and uh, the Heat Ran can be pretty annoying. Um, Heat Ran and Nidal King are only two Stealth Rockers, so if if he chooses not to bring one, uh, the other one's heavily implied to have Stealth Rocks if he's bringing Stealth Rocks at all. Like I said, I don't think he'll bring Drifloon because. Uh, because it's, it doesn't have a fantastic matchup. Um, he also has Toxic Spikes that he gets set with Nidal King, but I don't think he will because I've brought Nidal Queen to pretty much every match, and setting them up will take a turn away from attacking with Nidal King, which I think is its best uh, best case thing it can do every turn in this match. Uh, he's got uh, Cryogonal, which can defog and rapid spin, as well as Hitmonlee that can rapid spin, as well as Drifloom and Latios that can defog. So he's got his own ways of getting rocks out of this match. He doesn't have any clerics on his team, which is really important to me. 
Um, so he can't like if something were to be poisoned or paralyzed or burned, he can't get rid of that. He does have plenty of priority in fake out, uh, quick attack, mock punch, vacuum wave, ice shard, and sucker punch. He's got uh, three sucker punch users, Drifflum, Hitmonlee, and Nittle King, all of which could uh, perhaps catch my Alakazam off guard. And uh, like I was saying, if he does bring the Latios, I think he's going to bring like a choice specs variant. So he could also bring Baton Pass on that so that if he if he's in a position where he doesn't want to lock himself into something, he can lock himself into a momentum gaining uh, move such as Baton Pass. Um, Baton Pass along with Vault Switch could be problematic, especially once my Nettle Queen is gone or weakened to the point where Zero Aura can pick that thing off. So... Uh, Zara Aura is also another Pokemon that actually gets Taunt, so it can prevent um, Clefable from recovering up, so they can always just 2-hit KO me before, or yeah, it can 2-hit KO me before I can ever 2-hit KO it, um, if it's offensive enough, or perhaps a 3-hit KO. Um, but yeah, my man Jacob's been on a uh, been on a roll pretty much the last half of the season. I think he's only suffered one loss since week 5. And that was to Kay Kirby, who was the number two team. But yeah, it's going to be the prep. Uh, I guess we should talk about our team a little bit. So Mega Alakazam is really good in this matchup. Uh, we can trace Sheer Force Nettle King. We can trace uh, Bolt Absorb from the Zara Aura. We can trace um, the Mold Breaker and the Intimidate from Garrida. So really fun. Uh, this week in terms of everything that I can trace it does outpace his entire team with Psychic and Dazzling Gleam I hit his entire team for uh, neutral damage um, could also pack the Focus Blast for the Heat Ran and gives me three moves and a uh, I, could, I could run Taunt or Calm Mind or Protect to protect myself from Fake Out things like that um, and we've got a Suicune here with three attacks and roar because Mega Gyarados is an issue and uh, the Latios is actually an issue too if it's a setup variant and my Clefable is weakened enough. So I do got the Scald and the Ice Beam on there. I also have another move that I didn't reveal that I'm not going to speak about. I've um, got Clefable on here with Moonblast and I don't think I revealed it set either. I think it's a Wish Protect set. I got my Infernape on here with the Fire Punch. Um, Afforded to run Adamant this week because I can't outpace any of his Pokemon that force me to run Jolly anyway, such as uh, Latios or Zeraora. Like running Jolly, I can't outpace those, so I can run Adamant and still outpace up to the Hit One Lee, which outpaces everything else on this team except the Zeraora and the Latios. And my Mandibuzz, I've got U Turn and Knock Off on this bad boy, uh, as well as Roost, and my Nettle Queen has the Stealth Rocks and the uh, Sludge Wave. Earth Power and the Ice Beam for the Ladio. So yeah, it's going to be the team. We're going to hop into the replay now and see what happens in the battle. All right, so here we are with the battle. And my opponent chooses to bring the Latios, the Tapu Bulu, Nidal King, Mega Gyarados, Drifloom, and the Hitmonlee. So he brings two Pokemon I didn't think he would bring uh, necessarily. And he doesn't bring the Heat Ran or the Zero Orb, which is uh, pretty incredible. So if he does decide to want to lead with uh, Nidal King to get up Stealth Rocks, uh, which is his only stealth rocker now that the heat ran has not come. Um, I did uh, I did expect him to want to leave with the Nettle Queen, or excuse me, the Nettle King, and my Mandibuzz doesn't necessarily match up bad against any of those Pokemon. Um, of course, if he runs, uh, if he leads with Garader, Gyarados, or excuse me, my lead is Mandibuzz here. Uh, my plan is that I can take anyone here from the Latios, I can knock its item off, I can uh, U-turn out, or click Brave Bird versus the Tapu Bulu. I can U-turn versus the Nettle King and break a potential Focus Sash. Uh, tank any hit, go out to my Alakazam, make it evolve, potentially Tracen, Sheer Force. And uh, the Gyarados would have to like taunt my Mandibuzz to prevent being poisoned or something like that. I don't see it just setting up on my uh, Mandibuzz. It could just start attacking with Waterfall, but um, I am rocking the Rocky Helmet, which is nice for me, and against Drifloon and the uh, Hitmonlee, I can just click knock off and break bird. So I am just going to lead with my Mandibuzz here, see what he wants to lead with. He does lead with the Nettle King. I do tank the Thunderbolt, does less than half. I'm just going to need to turn out to my Mega Alakazam. I'm going to Mega Evolve immediately and just click Psychic. I'm not playing around. He doesn't have any uh, Psychic immunities uh, until his Gyarados Mega Evolves. So 
The Noodle King's gonna go down here, and since I am sheer force boosted, this is a roll uh, to knock out the Tapu Bulu if he's not offensively, in, or if he's not uh, bulky, but on the off chance that he is a bulky Tapu Bulu, I don't want to uh, be one shot while I do a lot of damage to him. I want to keep my Mega Alakazam around. So I'm going to immediately just heart switch into my Infernape expecting the grass type attack or the uh, setup. So he does go for the wood hammer. I take over half from that. It's incredible how much that does. And I'm just going to click fire punch here. Um, his Gyarados could come out. It does come out. I could be Thunder Punch here, so I do think he's either forced to switch or to Mega Evolve here with the Intimidate. Uh, Thunder Punch probably doesn't knock out a Mega Gyarados, but it would knock out a regular Gyarados. So he is forced to uh, Mega Evolve here, so I'm going to take the opportunity to just switch into my Suicune. As uh, my opponent does go for the, uh, the Waterfall, and he's going to take Rocky Helmet damage because my Suicune is Rocky Helmet. And here, I'm going to click Ice Beam, predicting him to go out into the Bulu or the uh, Latios. But he actually goes for the Grassy Terrain Boosted Power Whip and puts me in range of the following Waterfall. So, really cool set for the Gyarados there. Able to uh, break down my defensive core really well. I'm going to go out into my Mega Alakazam. I do outpace and can just knock this thing out with the Dazzling Gleam. And anything else is to get KO'd as well. So he does go out into the Bulu. Takes a nice 45, 43% or something. I'm just going to click Dazzling Gleam again. It did reveal Life Orb earlier and it does not have priority. So here he goes into the Drifling. I'm going to go out into my Nidal Queen on the first turn. Because if he isn't Calm Mind, I want to throw off some Ice Beams. But he does reveal to be uh, Calm Mind. So I'm going to go out into my Clefable. My Unaware Clefable will uh, pretty much wall this thing. Uh, infinitely so what I can do is just throw off a wish he does go out to his Mega Gyarados which was interesting had I just clicked uh, Moonblast there I would be at full uh, with a Gyarados down and no chance of what's about to happen so what's about to happen is he's gonna go for the Iron Head I get potentially flinched I don't get flinched thankfully and I'm gonna get my wish back after knocking out the Mega Gyarados so that's a really good turn for me um, he does go out to his Hitmonlee and here's where I ch make a choke and play so I allow Michael Fable to be poison jabbed, knowing there's a Latios and a Drifloom in the back that could both be potentially set up, and the Drifloom is probably 100% set up since it's uh, already revealed Calm Mind. So, that being said, my play 100% is to never let Clefable take damage right here, especially in, from an offensive hit on Lee with the poison jab. It does almost 70% to me. So he's going to be able to 2 hit KO me here. Um, knowing that I have the Rocky Helmet, and if he switches up his move, he'll just faint anyway. I'm going to go out into my Mandibuzz, and he does switch up his move. Close combat probably knocked out Michael Fable from that range anyway. He's going to go out into his Latios here. I'm just going to call, or excuse me, I'm just going to U-turn out, and I pop his weakness policy. So this is terrifying. Um, he is at plus two speed, plus two attack, and plus two special attack. So at this point, what I want to do is see what attack he's going to lock himself into. If he locks himself into Zen Headbutt, being a physically offensive variant, um, he's not going to be able to uh, knock out my Alakazam. However, if he goes it for the Outrage, he will knock me out. So what I'm going to do is scout for what he's going to go for here. Um, he could be uh, Draco or Dragon Pulse as well. So I'm just going to scout for that. He does go for the Ice Beam. Revealing Ice Beam is probably his best move to knock out my Alakazam. And from this range... Um, Dazzling Gleam does a minimum of 67 or 68% with a maximum of 79%. So my play here is to just go into my Mega Alakazam. I can survive one plus two Ice Beam and fire off a Dazzling Gleam that has a chance, a high chance to knock him out from this range. So I'm going to go for the Dazzling Gleam here, see if I can get the knockout on the Latios. And I do get the knockout. I do get a crit, which confirms the knockout 100%, but that, not, that, that roll was in my favor. It was a roll, but it was in my favor. Um, it was, like I said, 67, I think, to 79%, and he was at 71. So I would have needed a uh, low roll to not have knocked him out there. So he does bring in the Drifloom here. I am just going to click Psyche. If he attacks me, my Infernape will knock him out. And if he doesn't attack me, uh, my Alakazam will knock him out on the following turn. Since even after the Calm Mind, my Psyche will knock him out. And we're going to pick up a nice 4-0 victory to end the season. So we're going to finish 8-5 at plus 14, I believe. And uh, Jacob's going to finish at 9 and 4 plus 15. So he does he does still finish on top of us. He finishes top 4 or top 5 regardless. Um, I think 5th is the lowest he can possibly 
uh, place. I think sixth is the lowest we can possibly place, with fourth being the highest. And if we do, if we were to be the fourth place team, uh, I believe Jacob would be the third place. But yeah, that's going to be it for the regular season of the NNDL of season eight. A uh, pretty successful season all around. I think everybody pretty much played their games except for the two coaches who pretty much uh, vanished. Um, nobody's really had any major delays. Ryan's even did well. <laughs> But that's going to be it. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, Mega Alec is in picking up four knockouts in the last match. <clears throat> Similarly to how Inferno picked up six in the first match. Um, uh, I think we finished number... Well, we're in the top five or so for kills at 20 with Mega Alec is in. Mega Alec is in picked up 20 knockouts on the season, which is pretty cool. But, yeah, it's going to be it. So let me know what you guys thought about that prep and the plays on both sides of the field. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.